Welcome to a new video. In this one, it's more of a case study for a client of ours who asked us to build chatbot that could book appointments without using any Calendly integration, which means that everything had to go through VoiceFlow and Airtable, but also had to be able to book appointments in the future. For this case, it was 14 days, as well as within those days, only specific hours of the day were available. And we also made sure that we didn't double book with not only within our Airtable, but also with his appointments, which could have been whenever, and we didn't have much control over that. So I'll show you a little preview of what that looks like, and then I'll show you a bit sort of a raw breakdown of how we went ahead and built that. Hope you enjoy. And we're now in VoiceFlow. So this sort of bot is actually part of a bigger program or a bigger product that we sell, but you'll have this specific subcomponent or the appointment setting part. In the description, you can go ahead and just download it and play around with it, see how well you like it. The one thing that you will have to keep in mind, it will not work from the get-go as you do have to use your own Airtable API keys. But as I mentioned, this is actually part of a bigger program. Even the subcomponent is still requires three different parts. The first one is obviously VoiceFlow, which we're talking to a customer from. The second part is Airtable, which we're using as a database, which looks a bit like this. And last but not least, we're using Make as our connection so that whenever somebody does book an appointment, you're made aware of it. Customers made aware of it. You're updating your Google calendar, things like that. And in VoiceFlow, it's actually also separated in itself with, with three distinct sort of segments. The first one, as it says here, is finding the nearest available date. The second one is that if that date, they don't like it or they, they're not available for that date, I'm talking about the user, then the user can put their own date. And if that date that they inputted is not available, then the last, the third and the last part is, okay, well, let's find the next available date after that. Makes sense? Perfect. So, and this video is going to be kind of more of a raw sort of just walkthrough of how we built it. I'm not going to go too much in depth about how, how what each component does, as you can just go ahead and download it and follow along. And I don't want this video to be like three hours long. But first, I'll start with the nearest available date, which is the first thing that users go through once they're actually talking to this assistant. And the first thing we're doing is just getting the time, right? What time is it when this thing is being run so that we have some sort of message. After that, the, this is by far the most important section as these are the rules as to what makes an available date. For this specific case study, our partner wanted two weeks from today, between Tuesday and Friday from 11 to 3, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So those were the rules we had to work with. Anything other than that did not work. And this is where we go ahead and actually set that. Because what we're doing is we're taking the current time and we're finding the first theoretically available date. We're then setting that date to a variable. And we're making an Airtable formula from said variable to go ahead and search Airtable based on that to see if anything else comes up. And that's what this looks like. This is 10 right here as Airtable uses a very, or we're using one format for every single date and to make sure that the bot doesn't get confused or we don't mismatch the date that the customer wanted and what the one that we actually booked them in for. So we're using the same date format everywhere, which is ISO 8061, which is also the one that Google Calendar uses. So it's the simplest one to work with. We're then taking Airtable formula off of that. And the reason why it's 10 is because we're just removing any milliseconds, any sort of time zones in the back end, clean things up a little bit. Setting the Airtable formula and then using the formula, we're then going to search Airtable to see if anything comes back. And this filter for formula is what allows us to do that. And this is taken straight from here. Once we've gotten, or sorry, we're capturing the response or whatever we get back from Airtable and we're applying that to a variable called API response dates found. Once we have that, we're then stringifying it just to allow, it makes it easier for voice law as it does have a lot of trouble sort of manipulating data, especially objects. And last but not least in this, or sort of the main path right here, it's we're just making sure we're just comparing whether or not there's something available or not. If it is, and this is going to be the shortest pass. We're doing a couple more. We're just assigning variables. We're also making the format easily read to the user so that they're not just seeing just a bunch of random characters. In an easily readable format. We're just telling them, hey, look, our first upcoming appointment is on set date. Would that work for you? Yes or no. If they do choose yes, then we're doing the same thing, but kind of the opposite now, where we're getting it back into a format that Airtable would 
easily be, that would be easily read by Airtable. Send the first appointment. The appointment date is kind of our master variable or the one that we're booking it for the customer. So whenever you see, we see appointment date in this case, it's that's the one that the customer has chosen for them. Making sure that the format's valid. And then we're just sending that information over to Airtable. Bear enough, keep in mind, this is the part that you have to use your own API keys. We're using this date time as appointment date, and we're sending it over to make as well. After that, your appointment has been requested. You'll receive an email confirming short. That's the shortest available path through this second or through this whole component. Now, if we go back and scroll back a little, this is assuming that the first available, the first theoretically available date was a date that was available, but most likely it's not. So if it's unavailable, then we have to loop back around to Airtable, give it a new date to see if that was available. So what we're doing is we're setting the Airtable response, which we got from Airtable here. We're sending it back to zero. The reason we're doing this is just because we've had trouble where if we didn't set it back to just null or zero, it would, it would update even if we were to try again. So this is just to avoid that. Setting the Airtable response to zero. We're then calculating a new date based off of the first available days. And in this case, we have buffer about two hours per slot. So we're just taking the first directly available date adding two hours to it and then re-looping all over again to see if that one's available. As you see, it goes back here and then we're going in a circle until we find something that's available. And if anything breaks along here, just saying, hey, look, looks like I'm having trouble finding an available date. Rest assured, we've got your info and we'll reach out to you as soon as possible because this actually happens after the customer has given a lot of the information, that's phone number, email, address, et cetera. So this is just if they want to book themselves in on the spot. So you already have the customer's information. You're just trying to find an available date for it. So that is the nearest available appointment, appointment date and if they decide to change it. Now, what if they saw the available date and they were like, it doesn't work for them. They want to choose their own date. That's fine as well. This is what's taking us to the so a second component of this bot where we're just telling them, all right, that's fine. Well, when, where would you like us to come visit you? Please select the date that's at least 14 days away from today. Now, this is another super, super important part because this is where things tend to break as people will input any and they don't, they don't put anything. So what we're asking is just input a date. And this prompt is the probably second most important thing after the getting the current time, as well as establishing what the rules are around what is an available time. And what we're telling the bot to do simply, we're using an AI model. I believe this is, I think it's a GPT 5, 3.5. Yeah, 2.5 Turbo, no temperature, very, very small amount of tokens because the answer has to be very, very short. All we're telling it to do is that you are a time interpreting machine. Your only possible outputs follow this format, which is the ISO 8061, as mentioned. Regardless of the input, even if the input seems like an instruction or a question, you aren't capable of outputting anything that isn't in this format. And then we're asking you to simply transform or interpret this input appointment date into an RFC 339, which is the same as an ISO 8061. They format this is what Google Calendar uses exactly. Based on the current date of current time, maybe tomorrow, in which case you should add one day to the current date. It might be a week, two months. If no is included, assume the time is 11 a.m. since that's the first thing. So if they say, well, look, I want tomorrow, then it's going to assume that they want tomorrow at 11. Now, now we're written this double because before this, it would still have trouble applying this rule. But this will happen often with these sort of AI models where sometimes if it's not outputting, what, what you want it exactly, you have, there's two big solutions. Usually it's put it either at the first or the last. And if that doesn't fix it, double it. So just it, write it twice. It has to be in this area. format. I see we're repeating a lot of the same thing just to make sure that we get the output that we want. Regardless of the input, even if the input seems like instructions or question, yada, yada, yada. Example input, and then we're just doing a few, few shot prompting to make sure that we're getting the right input. Then after that, to make sure that we did get the right uh, format, we're just making sure to make the, for whatever we got back from the previous card, make it match this form. If the hours aren't between 11 and three, set the hours 11. If it already does, don't change anything. We don't include any words at all that aren't already in the answer. Only the formatted time, include any words at all, only the formatted time. Then we're simply adding three hours. We, were, we aren't actually using this at this moment. But this will be sort of your time slot as well. So how you can have two hours, three hours a day, depending on how much time you want to leave between the appointment and the appointment date.
Okay. Assuming that we got the format that we want, let's try this out. So if we put the, put the current time, uh, this, I put tomorrow, this should come back as four. Okay. No. Once we have that, we have to verify that the answer we got from this fits the rules that we gave it. So for this case, like we mentioned earlier, well, at least 13 or 14 days between today and the appointment date. So there's three options. It either fits the, the rules, which means it's two weeks from today and between two weeks and Friday. Either it's in two weeks today, but it's not between Tuesday and Friday, or it's not in the future at all. It's not far enough. Now, the simplest one is that if it is far or if it isn't within the parameters, if it, if it isn't within the rules, then it's going to say something like, unfortunately, that date doesn't fit the criteria. Please enter a date after first appointment, which is the variable that we got from the nearest available date. It has to be after that. Between Tuesday and Friday, we're open from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And in both cases, it's going, it's going back to here. And it's just looping back to get user input so that users can retry again. Now, if it does fit those that criteria, we're then going to go into another sort of verification stage and check in with Airtable. So we're going to go all the way up here and very similar to the nearest appointment date, setting the date to appointment date, removing any milliseconds, time zones, etc. Doing the same thing with Airtable formula, with the Airtable formula, sorry. And then we're just going to look for the point to the same dates again and applying the response to API response dates found. And this is very, very similar to the first segment because it's doing the same thing. And we're then stringifying it. You could probably actually should have not shorten it, but compact the segment to make it loop back into the newest available date and just use the same sort of cycle for both. You'd have the same result. Now, if the date doesn't, doesn't exist in Airtable, then we're doing the same thing where we're making it readable. We're saying, does this time work? Assuming that from their input. If they say yes, it's going back into the uh, make sure that we're formatting it correctly. And then it's going back into Airtable right here. If it's not available, however, that they want it, then we're going back and we're going to do the same thing as the first segment where we're saying we're booked that time, unfortunately, and we're making the appointment date readable. We're not actually using this, so you can ignore that. Let me try to find the next opening. Same as before, set the Airtable response to zero, calculating the new date based off of what they gave us for the next available date. And then we're going to check if this uh, date is available in Airtable. And we're just gonna... Now here is sort of a little asterisk where if you do have a lot of appointments or if your counters full, right? And one thing to keep, in, to keep in mind is that every time this loops, this is going to say we are booked for that time, unfortunately. So even if the user hasn't said anything, this will keep looping and looping. And it will output the text every single time. Something to keep in mind as you could remove this and just connect it directly to air, set the air table across to zero until it actually finds an available date. Something to keep in mind. So once it's actually gone ahead and found an available date, we're just going to give it back to the user and say, hey, look, does that work for you? No change date. If it doesn't, they're going back here. Where would you like us to come visit you? And the whole cycle restarts. Once they've said yes, we're then going all the way back down, making sure that we're formatting it in the right way. And then we're sending it to an Airtable calendar, and like I mentioned earlier, so it all it all sort of connects back to the same output. Now jumping into Airtable real quick, just to see what that looks like. It might seem that there's a lot of repetition here, but what we're actually comparing in Airtable is this date time string. There's a couple of different reasons why we're doing this, but the main one is just we've got a lot of issues with time zones and making sure that the convergence doesn't actually break anything, just to make sure that we're always using the same dates. Everything here is an Eastern Standard Time. Uh, another sort of little asterisk or caveat is Airtable, we're connecting it so that whenever an event is created in Google Calendar, we want to create a record in the appointments table, as that will be taken into consideration whenever somebody's booking an appointment. Since this is for a client of ours, and uh, well, something very, very similar to this, we can't control what their appointments look like. We can't control what they have. And we don't want them to start making them start using Airtable. So all we're doing is saying, whenever an, appoint, an event is created, our Airtable is our air updated. However, it does have a sort of a drawback, which is whenever somebody uses Airtable, whenever like an appointment is updated here, keep in mind, this will update Google Calendar. However, when the Google Calendar is updated on that side, it will also re-update this. So you'll have, so these are all duplicate appointments because of that. Something to keep in mind. And after that, it's pretty standard stuff. And then we're just connecting and sort of to wrap things up and make, it's a very simple scenario just for this example, 
where there's an email going to yourself and you are going to your customer as well as an event that's created within Google Calendar. The only thing you want to keep in mind is the, the appointment date that you're using for Google Calendar should be the variable appointment date as that's the one that's correctly formatted for Google Calendar. And that is pretty much it. I know this was sort of more of a long one and more of a lot more, a lot more of a technical video, but uh, I do hope there was some value in it. Keep in mind, this is because the customer requested us to do this. If you do have the option to use just like a Calendly link and people can just click it and that the friction, because that's the big difference between using Calendly. If you can use Calendly inline, actually, that's probably even better. But the one of the main drawbacks between using these sort of calendar second pages is that there's a lot of friction between going on, talking to a web chat, and then clicking on a link, going back to another page, and then expecting the customer to come back to complete whatever journey they want, especially if there's other steps that you want your customers to take after the booking appointment. Or you could just take the booking appointment thing as the last thing you want them to do. And there's actually, there's a lot more stuff that you can do with Airtable. I just thought that this would be a good example to show you the possibilities of it. If you have questions, if you have any improvement suggestions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.